Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we have paired back up with Benzinga Pro. I'm very excited about this. I'm gonna show you how you can set up a very simple layout using Benzinga Pro's workspace and how we're just gonna use the details in the scanner and we can set up a very, very efficient uh, layout that's gonna take up very little space, but I'll show you how you can manipulate this a little bit to uh, suit your needs as well. This is gonna be one of many videos. We're gonna do a series on workspace build outs in Benzinga Pro, this is very exciting stuff. We've got some older videos that are very popular on how to set up layouts, but we've got some new tricks that we wanna show you, so stay tuned. If you haven't already, smash the like button, follow us, and subscribe for more content. Let's dive into it. Now, what I have here is the typical workspace that I use very often. You're gonna see the news and scanner, so I'm just basically using the details page and the scanner, and I'll show you why, but we're gonna go ahead and use this plus signal or sign here, and uh, it's gonna, open up this window where you can decide to use one of the preloaded workspaces, or you can develop your own just by selecting what you want and then hit create workspace. So we're gonna do that here. So I want the details and I want the uh, scanner. So these, in my opinion, might be the two most powerful tools that Benzinga has to offer. Now, uh, if you disagree, that's fine. Let, let me hear it in the comment section below. We'll, we'll dispute this in, a, in an orderly fashion, right? But I do believe that these are gonna be very popular uh, options here, the details tab and of course the scanner tab. So let's create this. Now we will dive into these other uh, segments here or other uh, workspaces that you can add to this, but that's gonna be for another video. So let's dive into what I think is most important details and scanner. So create the workspace. Okay, very simple. We've got the details on the left, we've got the scanner on the right. Okay, what's happening here is the scanner is going to identify stocks of value that are really set to the filters that you choose, right? You're choosing filters to be set, that way you're uh, basically eliminating some of the BS in the market. So we're not getting a whole bunch of those those uh, low quality type of alerts, we're only focusing on alerts that are going to meet the requirements for our strategy, right? We all trade a, a very specific strategy. For me, it's often low float stock. So some of the options in here I will change are gonna be the float size, price, things like that, but you'll you'll get an idea of what you can do here. But the scanner, plain and simple, is just searching for value, right? Looking in the markets, it's our, it's our radar. Where's the value in that market, right? The scanner is going to identify the value in a market, and it's going to do this uh, either real time or however you have it set. And you can see that this is going to be a list of stocks that are at this. Uh, this one looks like they're gapping up. So let's expand this. Gapping up from its previous close, you can see that these are the highest uh, gappers on the day. And I know GLMD has been moving all day, so we'll, we'll use this as an example. Now, what I love about this quick layout here is we've got the details on the left, scanner on the right. What I love about the details specifically, and specifically over the news tab, is that the scanner is used to identify any stock that meets the, the criteria, right? So if I say a stock has you know, 5,000 shares of volume, uh, alert me and let me know, then this is gonna let me know. Well, then I can click on that. And what I love about the details page is watch this. If I click on it, it then automatically plots and populates on the left-hand side the information there. So this is gonna be the overview tab. We've got multiple tabs here. We've got the news, calendar, chart, financials, peers, insiders, government trades, key data. Key data is a very important one. If I click on this, you can instantly get the float size. There it is. It's a micro float. It's less than a million share float. Very low float stock, so high potential for a squeeze. And guess what? It sure is squeezing. So if we pull up the chart, same thing, it's automatically populating the chart for that ticker. And you can see that this is a day time frame, the D up here one day. And you can see that this thing is, is definitely gapping up, right? It, it, was, it was dead right. This scanner is identifying and saying there's value here, it's gapping up on the day. And sure enough, we can now uh, verify that very quickly just by clicking on it. So if I switch to BFI, same thing. You can see that this one's over here. It's not doing so hot on the day, right? Red red candle here. But regardless, you can see it automatically populates on the left-hand side. Any ticker that I click on automatically populates. So if I'm looking for a day chart and a certain type of pattern, well, this is gonna make it really easy for me to identify that, especially in the pre-market when I'm setting up my, my uh, trades or potential trades for the day. So GLMD, if I switch this to a different time frame, maybe the one minute time frame, now I can quickly ident identify, excuse me, if there's volume or not, right? Down here are those volume bars. And I can see if I hover over each one of these candles, the volume is gonna populate up here. You can see if I hover over this, that's 20,000 shares of volume, 167,000 shares of volume, 152,000 shares of volume, 
203,000 shares of volume. We can easily identify that, yes, there's a lot of volume right here in this stock. So maybe if I click on one of these other ones, I can quickly identify, hey, yeah, this one's gapping up, but it has no volume, right? There's no volume there to be uh, to be traded. So I need volume, liquidity. I'm a day trader, right? So, okay, this is optimized for day trading. Very quickly, we can navigate through this and say, okay, well, GLMD, it's got volume. I can see that. I can identify that. Now, what's really cool is if you keep your cursor to the right-hand side where the scanner is, you'll see that this is automatically populating the volume. The volume that you're seeing populate is the most current candle. So that's gonna be this candle that's forming right now. So we can easily see, okay, it's got 35,000 shares, right? Over here, 36,000 shares, 38,000 shares. We can easily identify that by looking right in this area as I keep the cursor to the right, right? There we go, 52,000, 53,000. So yes, there's a lot of volume, right? If I'm trading, you know, 1,000 shares, 5,000 shares, 10,000 shares. Well, it's got 60,000 shares on this one minute candle, that's plenty of volume, right? And I can easily identify that by click, uh, clicking through this. BFI, click on this, 93,000. Okay, that's got a lot of volume in this one minute chart. Okay, let's go over a couple of these, 194,000, 52,000. So this one does have some volume, some liquidity, something to keep on uh, in mind. Now this one's price is only 20 cents. We can see the price listed on our scanner. So I love that about this. Now news, same thing guys. If you're in the, uh, say the pre-market section, uh, and you're you're trying to find that news fast, and you know you don't see it populate on your news feed all the time, and you're kind of frustrated and wondering why. Well, don't worry about it. Just build a scanner that looks for volume. As soon as it hits your scanner and you see the volume, you can click on it and easily populate and identify. Benzinga will let you know is there news here or not. If there is, it's going to be populated in this uh, section here. You can see the date listed, the news headline. You can click on it, open up the article. Right, you can open up some of these. Uh, just by clicking on that, reading this article if you uh, want to, and you can go through these headlines and see, is there news? You can quickly do that. And when we're day trading, time is money, right? These decisions that we're making, I always say to our, our team that, you know, there's a major difference from being patient and being apprehensive, right? Being patient, apprehensive, right? We want to be patient, but we don't want to be apprehensive. We want to make quick decisions when the time is right. And we want to make sure that we get all the information as soon as possible. So BFI, I click on this, automatically populates. We can see up here, why is it moving? And you can see, okay, it's moving because it has uh, received an approval for $3.5 million in financing, support 144 locations. Great. So now I can easily uh, pair that with that and say, you know what, this one's moving because it has uh, some news. It has a news article, some PR out, right? You can go through this list in your pre-market and say, okay, and you can make a checklist, say BFI does have news, the SMSI maybe doesn't have news, DTSS maybe doesn't have news, right? You can easily go through this, look for these headlines if you have this on the news tab. So depending on what tab you have this on, it will automatically populate with your scanner on the right. So let's keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep this on the key data for now so we can easily look at the, uh, the float size. So okay, float size there, 3.4 uh, million. Uh, this one, let's see, float size here is gonna be the 10 million share float. Okay, so these are low float stocks, great. All right, let's go back to the chart and let's keep it on chart for now so we can easily identify what the chart pattern looks like on the one minute time frame. Very important. I'm going to keep this on the one minute time frame. I'll even favorite that. Okay. And now on the right hand side for our scanner, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, settings here. Number one, the first thing I see is that it's a refresh uh, rate is going to be every 10 seconds. Let's turn that to real time. So let's get that real time. So we're getting the data as fast as possible. Because again, we're, we're setting this up for optimized for day trading. So we want to see this as soon as possible. Now the columns that we have down here for me, uh, I don't really need to see the market cap. So the columns are going to be these, uh, these up here, these, these categories. So let's go ahead and take this off. I don't want the market cap on there. Change the previous close. We can keep that, I guess, uh, volume. Okay. We'll keep that. And, uh, let's see price. That's great. And I think that's good for now. Let's go ahead and add the change on the one minute. Let's click on that. Let's click on the volume for the one minute, and we'll just use the one minute for uh, for at this time. So click on that, okay? And you can see when I click on those, that adds the uh, the tab up here, okay? Adds the column. So if I want to manipulate this data, and I want to see all of these stocks, but I want to see which one is moving the most in the last one minute time frame, click on that, and it's going to filter it and show you this one's up six percent in the last one minute time frame. This one's up 4%, right? And this is automatically populating. So you're going to see that this changes, 
real time. So as the results change, so will this. So let's click on Rave and see what we have here. Okay, we can see that we have very little volume. Then we get this one random candle. So maybe this isn't very smooth or fluent price action that we're looking for. So maybe this doesn't set up for me, but maybe you wanna identify this as a potential breakout because it is getting some volume and a spike in the right direction. So let's click on uh, FTEL. Okay, we're getting a little bit more volume here, but only 8,000 shares, so not a lot of volume there. So let's go ahead and add a, vo uh, a volume filter here. So let's click on this tab here. So active, we have one filter active. Price and volume, let's click on that. Okay, let's go to the price. Let's add a price first. Let's do a custom price and let's look for stocks. Uh, for this, we're going to look for between one and say $10, right? And you can change this to anything you prefer. This will just be one example. What we're trying to do is narrow down the results uh, down here. So we don't want as many results, okay? So let's go to the volume. So this is the volume, very interesting. Now the volume is gonna be for the volume in general, right? The total volume. But if we're looking for one minute volume, let's scroll on down here. And there it is, volume 1M, one minute, okay. Let's do this, uh, let's see, over, let's say over a thousand shares and let's see if that changes this list. Okay, it did change this list. Let's go over 5,000 shares. Okay, all right, now let's see if we can do something else to, to change these results. We still have too many results down here. So let's see, change from the previous close, we wanna see that up. Okay, that's gonna be right here. So let's go ahead and go to uh, change from open. Okay, we want the change from the close. Uh, here it is, change from the close. Let's say up, we just wanna see it up. Okay, that eliminates some uh, options there. All right, now let's look at the total volume. Let's go ahead to the total volume. I believe that was up here, volume any. Let's change this to uh, over 100,000, all right? So we shrunk the list a little bit there. And now here's an important one for me, it's gonna be the float size. So let's go for a reference and uh, let's see if we can find it here in, in reference. And if we can't find it, what we'll do is we'll search for it. So we can search up here as well, but I'm pretty, pretty stubborn. I feel like we can find it. All right, let's look for float. Let's hit float. There it is, share float. Okay, <laughs> now we found it. All right, let's click on this, let's do custom. Let's go a maximum float size, right? We'll do 150 million share float and see if that makes any change down here. Let's click off and look at that. We don't have any results, no results at all. Isn't that wild? So uh, let's leave it like that for now. I think that's okay. So let's go back to our active, uh, uh, filters here. Let's exit off the float. These are active filters. Okay. So now these are going to be uh, stocks that have met our requirements. And as you can see, the list is a lot smaller than than it was, right? So I believe that GLMD is closer to 20. So let's up the price a little bit. Let's up this price to $20 just to be safe. So we want to see GLMD on this list uh, if we can. And there it is, GLMD. So click on that, because this one is the most popular on the day. I think this one's up like 183% from open or whatever it may be. Now, if I'm looking for the one that has the most volume in the last minute, let's click on this here. Okay, now we're looking at stocks that have the most volume in the last minute. So if you're a volume hunter, right? Just a, a quick rundown here. If you're a volume hunter, just with this quick, easy, uh, filtered scan, you can now see that GLMD has the most volume in the last minute, right? GLMD, GLMD, okay? Every time it populates, it's GLMD again. So we know that this one has a lot of volume. So something we definitely want to keep uh, keep watch on. So let's go to, uh, let's move the volume here to over 200,000. And now, guys, uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, right? This volume that I'm, I'm adjusting, this is because it's the regular market session. I think it's it's 1.30 right now. It's like 1.30 p.m. So this is the regular market session. So it's okay to put a, a higher number on the volume at this point of day, but keep in mind, if it's if you're doing this scan in the pre-market, you don't wanna set a high number of volume for the overall volume because then you're not gonna get any results because it's still, you wanna catch these before it gets a lot of that volume, right? So, so keep that in mind. Maybe you wanna have this under instead of over. Maybe you wanna have it under 500,000 to catch those early morning gappers, something really fast. 
Uh, so let's do over 500,000. See if that narrows it down a little bit. Okay. It still narrows it down, but just not enough for my liking. So let's change the float size. Let's change this float size from 150 million to say 50 million. Let's get crazy here, right? 50 million share float. Let's see what happens. And there we go. All right. Now our list is a lot shorter. I don't have to go through a million stocks. I can quickly click through these and say, okay, DTSS, is this my type of uh, setup I'm looking for? Maybe, maybe not. PLCE, is this what I'm looking for? A breakout here in a one minute time frame? Maybe not. Uh, let's see, WHLR, okay. Now, that's another thing. If you want to see the float size, I believe you can do that too. So let's go to columns here. Let's see if we can find float. And you can search up here. So let's just save us some time, right? Uh, float, there we go. Share float. Click that, hit OK. So if you're looking for maybe the smallest float available, you can see that right there. But you get the idea, right? We're, we're looking at a, a, a bunch of information here on the right-hand side, very simply looking at that information, very clean, right? We can see that the change, we can see the change from previous close. We can see the volume, right? We can see that's the overall volume. This is the one minute volume, the one minute change. So if you want to see the stock that's moving up the most in the last minute, you can do that or the one with the most volume, which is to me probably the most important because volume is going to be uh, my key for trading larger size. If you're trading smaller size, sometimes volume is not as important. If you're trading larger size, then typically volume is going to be very important. The float size is important to me as well. So now we can quickly uh, or quickly quickly click through these and you can see now uh, some examples of, okay, this one is not bad. I can see the volume populating on the right, uh, excuse me, left hand side on each one of these 7,000 shares, 577 uh, shares, 174,000 shares, now 87,000 shares. This is the, the chart I probably want to watch for quick trades, right? And we can see it's now breaking out and has been breaking out pretty much all day on this higher, higher volume. Look at this move, very strong. So very cool, guys. Very simple breakdown here of how to use Benzinga Pro. This is just the details and the scanner. And this is one of many videos we're going to do diving into the settings, the scanners, the uh, news feeds, why I like the uh, details over the news feed. You guys get a little, uh, little taste of that here. But going to be diving into this. This is a mini series, guys. If you like it, thumbs up. Uh, drop a comment down below if I haven't seen you in a while, guys. I'm back with Benzinga. Very proud to say that Benzinga reached out to me, and we are now affiliates, and we are going to be working together, and this is really cool. So happy to be able to bring these videos back to you, going over Benzinga Pro and how it works, and we're going to do a lot of how-tos because I know you guys love those. So, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and uh, good luck trading.